In this video, we will learn about Sturm's conoid, circle of least confusion and spherical equivalent of the eye. To orient ourselves, we will quickly revise the basics of refraction first. So what happens when parallel rays of light coming from a point source that is placed at infinity pass through a spherical lens? They converge at a single point. This is because a spherical surface has the same refractive power in all its meridians and thus all these rays are refracted by the same amount to meet at a single point. And what happens when these parallel rays of light pass through a cylindrical lens? Unlike a spherical lens that has the same power along all its meridians, a cylindrical lens has power only along one meridian or we can say one axis. So, parallel rays of light passing through this cylinder will converge to form a line like this and this line formed will be perpendicular to the axis of the cylinder. So, this is the axis of the cylinder and this is the plane along which the line is formed. Thus, a spherical lens would form a point image and a cylindrical lens would form a line image. Now what happens when these rays pass through a spherocylindrical lens? First of all, we should know what a spherocylindrical lens is. A spherocylindrical lens is a combination of a sphere and a cylinder. It has refractive power present along two principal meridians that are present at 90 degrees to each other. It is also known as an astigmatic lens or a toric lens. Sturm's conoid is a representation of how light rays pass through a spherocylindrical lens. Let's understand this with the help of an example. This lens here has plus 2 dioptric power in the vertical meridian and plus 3 dioptric power along its horizontal meridian. This means that the horizontal meridian is more convex than the vertical meridian or we can say that the horizontal meridian has more converging power than the vertical meridian. These parallel rays of light represent light coming from a point source which is placed at infinity. These green colored rays represent the horizontal beam and the blue colored rays represent the vertical beam. Since horizontal meridian has more power than the vertical meridian, the horizontal beam of light will converge at a point before the point of convergence of the vertical beam of light. So this is where let's say the horizontal rays would focus and this is where the vertical rays would focus. We can see that the point of focus of the vertical rays would be farther away from the lens than the point of focus of the horizontal rays. Now what happens when we place a screen along this path? to check what image is being formed at different points along this path. Let's say that we are standing here right in front of the lens facing it and we are viewing the image being formed on this screen here. There will be many different scenarios and we will discuss them one by one. Suppose we place the screen right here that is before the point of convergence of the horizontal beam. What kind of image will form here? Here as we can see that the horizontal rays are converging more than the vertical rays because horizontal meridian has more power of convergence which means that the horizontal rays are closer together than the vertical rays or we can say that the horizontal beam is narrower than the vertical beam. So if we place a screen here, the image that is formed will be an oval which is more elongated vertically than it is horizontally. This is a vertically oval image. Scenario 2 is if we move the screen a little away from the lens and place it at the focal point of the horizontal meridian. Now here the horizontal beam has fully converged to form a point but the vertical beam is still on its path to reach its focal point. So the image that is formed here will be formed only by the vertical beam of light and we will get a vertical line on the screen like this. In simple words, the image of our point source which is placed at infinity will look like a straight vertical line here and not a point. Let's move the screen further away. Now in this scenario 3, 
Here we can see that the horizontal beam of light that had converged previously has now begun to diverge, but the vertical beam is still converging. The image formed here will again be a vertically oval image, but the size of this oval will be smaller than the size of the oval that we saw in scenario 1 because the beam of light is narrower. Scenario 4 When we move the screen further away, we know that the horizontal beam is still diverging and the vertical beam is still converging and we reach a point where the size of the horizontal beam is more or less equal to the size of the vertical beam and the image that we get on the screen is a circular image. This circle is known as the circle of least confusion and we will learn in a while why this circle is so important in optics. So now we have moved the screen to a point away from the point where the circle of least confusion was formed and now we are placing it a little proximal to the focal point of vertical meridian, means a little ahead of it. So this is where our screen is. Now we can see that the horizontal beam is continuing to diverge while the vertical beam is continuing to converge. Thus the vertical beam is narrower than the horizontal beam here and the image that we get on the screen is a horizontally oval image. In scenarios 1 and 3, we got vertically oval images, but here we have a horizontally oval image. Now if we put the screen further away, that is on the focal point of the vertical meridian, the vertical beam has finally converged to a single point, but the horizontal beam is diverging. So the image formed here will be formed by the horizontal beam only and we get a horizontal line. So our point object placed at infinity will look like a horizontal line here. Also just to be clear, if you are confused that why am I calling it a horizontal line when I have drawn it obliquely, it is because we are looking at the screen from an angle in this diagram. If we look at the screen from straight ahead that is from here, then we will see a horizontal line and not anything oblique like this. Last scenario is when we place the screen behind the second focal point. Here both the rays are diverging. The horizontal beam had already been diverging for quite some time and the vertical beam has started to diverge too. Thus the amount of divergence of the horizontal beam is more than the amount of divergence of the vertical beam and we get a horizontally oval image and this oval is larger than the oval we got in scenario 5. This is our term sconoid. We encounter two focal lines here. This is the proximal focal line and this is the distal focal line. The gap between these two focal lines is known as the focal interval of sturm. And this as I told you is the circle of least diffusion or the circle of least confusion. So what do we derive from this diagram? The light rays are coming from a point object that is kept at infinity and after refracting from the spherocylindrical lens, at no point do these light rays coming from a point object meet to form a point image. Either we are getting a line or we are getting a circle or we are getting ovals. How do we transform this conoid into a point? What neutralizing lens should we use? Let's understand this with the help of a simple example. We know that the total converging power of our eye is plus 60 diopters. Suppose this is the eye of the patient and the converging power of this eye is 58 diopters and light rays entering the eye are focusing behind the retina. The net error of this eye is minus 2 diopters. Keep in mind that I am talking about the net error of the eye. Minus 2 means that the power of the eye is less than normal by 2 diopters and this patient needs to be given plus 2 diopters spherical lenses to bring the image to the retina. Plus 2 diopter sphere is the refractive error of the patient and this is a case of simple hypermetropia. What if this patient has a simple hypermetropic astigmatism? Suppose this eye has a net error of minus 2 diopters in the vertical meridian and no error in the horizontal meridian. Means power of the eye is 58 diopters in the vertical meridian and 60 diopters in the horizontal meridian. This means 
that horizontal beam of light coming from a point source which is placed at infinity will focus on the retina because it has net zero error. But vertical rays of light will focus behind the retina and this focus will be in the form of a vertical line behind the retina. Why a line? Because the error is only along the vertical meridian. So we will write that the net error of this eye is minus 2 diopter cylinder at 180 degrees because cylinder acts in the axis perpendicular to it. So if we place a minus 2 cylinder at 180 degrees, only then will it produce an error of minus 2 in the vertical meridian. To form a clear image, we not only need to bring this focus on the retina, we also need to collapse this line into a point. So the corrective lens needed in this case would be a cylinder of plus 2 diopters at 180 degrees. 180 degrees because we want the correction in the vertical meridian, so we place the lens perpendicular to it and plus 2 because that is how we will neutralize the minus 2. So coming back to Sturm's conoid, now suppose this is the net error of the patient. He has plus 2 error in the vertical meridian and plus 3 error in the horizontal meridian and this is the Sturm's conoid formed with respect to the retina. Again, this is the net error of the eye and not the refractive error. Refractive error is what we are going to find out. Now both the focal lines are falling in front of the retina. To help this eye focus, we need to convert this conoid into a point image means we need to collapse this entire conoid into a point and then that point should fall on the retina. How are we supposed to do that? So the net error of this eye is plus 2 cylinder at 180 degrees and plus 3 cylinder at 90 degrees and to collapse the vertical beam, we need minus 2 cylinder at 180 degrees and to collapse the horizontal beam, we need minus 3 cylinder at 90 degrees. So our prescription would be minus 2 diopter sphere minus 1 diopter cylinder at 90 degrees. This is a case of compound myopic astigmatism, which is a type of regular astigmatism. Thus, in order to correct any regular astigmatism, we need to prescribe a spherocylindrical lens to collapse the Sturm's conoid. The concept of Sturm's conoid would not be applicable in cases of irregular astigmatism because in that case there will be multiple focal lines. Now suppose your patient is not accepting any cylindrical correction and you realize that you will just have to give him a sphere. What spherical power would you give to this patient? You cannot give him a minus 2 diopter sphere because that would only bring the distal focal line on the retina and the image would still be quite blurred. You cannot give him a minus 3 diopter sphere because that would take only the proximal focal line to the retina and again his vision won't be good. We learned about the circle of least confusion earlier in this video. Of all the images that we get along the Sturm's conoid, circle of least confusion is what closely resembles a point. Mind you that the vision here is still blurred. It is suboptimal, but it is still better than the image we see on any other point on the Sturm's conoid. So if we cannot collapse the Sturm's conoid, because for some reason we cannot prescribe a spherocylindrical lens in our patient, the least that we can do is to give our patient a spherical power that would bring the circle of least confusion onto the retina. This spherical power that places the circle of least confusion on the retina is known as the spherical equivalent. The smaller the circle is, the more it will resemble a point image and better will be the visual acuity of the patient. The formula for calculating spherical equivalent is spherical power plus half of cylindrical power. So in our example, the spherical equivalent would be minus 2 plus half of minus 1 which means minus 2 plus minus 0.5. Do not ignore the signs, minus will remain minus and plus will remain plus. So it will be minus 2 minus 0.5 or minus 2.5. So the spherical equivalent in this case is minus 2.5. If we give a sphere of minus 2.5 diopters to this patient, the circle of least confusion would be placed on the retina of this patient and he will have the best vision possible 
if only a spherical lens is available. So I hope you guys liked this video. In our upcoming videos, we will learn more about astigmatism, its types, the optics, transposition of lenses, etc. Till then, please like and share this video with your friends and colleagues if you found it useful. And please subscribe to my channel to support free education. Thank you very much.